This is World Cup Weekly, your best wrap up of World Cup headlines on the road to South Africa. And wow, do we have so much to talk about. The friendlies bonanza, every team that is a favorite for the World Cup had a friendly. And I'm gonna start with FIFA's number one ranked team, Spain, against France. I was hoping that they would cream Le Bleu after what happened to Ireland, but that's not what happened. France came out strong, dominating the game, especially in the first half, running fast, being really aggressive, making a lot of opportunities. And I was really getting anxious. I was like, Spain, wake up, make something happen. And finally, David Villa did in the 21st minute. He found a hole, scored a goal, and then Sergio Ramos sealed the deal in the 45, 45th minute of the first half. But Spain, you gotta watch this game over because you guys were just too lax, too laid back. And when you compare a first ranking team to a team that almost didn't qualify for the World Cup, in my opinion, they were on par. So even though the score was there, I was really underwhelmed. Next, the coach we all love to hate, Maradona, took Argentina to Munich to face off with Deutschland, who is three-time world champion. And who would have thunk it? They won. And the goal came from Gonzalo Huguain in the 45th minute. I know, Gonzalo who? After all, Lionel Messi, FIFA's player of the year, was there, but he was a wallflower. I guess he was having an off day, whatever. But there goes Maradona sticking one more feather in his hat. And he's like, I told you so. I've got it under control. And it makes you think because there have been teams that have qualified perfectly for the World Cup that have just not brought the promise to the actual tournament. And then you have teams like Brazil even, who barely qualified for the World Cup and went on to win the tournament. So these kinds of games make you wonder, well, is that the path that Argentina's on? Because if he's able to pull it out of nowhere, that's all that really matters, right? Winning the game one way or another. So. One of the games I was really looking forward to was Team USA face off with the Netherlands. This would be kind of a reality check for Team USA to see what it's really like and what it would really take to take on a top seeded team, a favorite to win the cup. The Netherlands qualified perfectly for the World Cup. Eight games, won them all, didn't give away a single goal. So it was no surprise that the Netherlands dominated most of the game, and especially in the first half. They were so fast. They were so aggressive, they were like white on rice, and Team USA couldn't get out of their own end. It caused so much frustration, they gave away a penalty in the 39th minute. But come second half, Coach Bradley must have said something. The light bulb went on, and they came back with more attack, they made more opportunities, and you know, it became a more interesting game. Unfortunately, uh, the Netherlands got a deflected goal in the 72nd minute, but then Team USA came back in the 88th. Out of all of the friendlies, I feel like this one gave one of the Cup's dark horses, USA, the most to learn from. And it was funny because I felt like Netherlands and USA have very similar styles of playing. So I'm sure they're going to watch the video, take notes, and they're going to come back more improved. So even though the scoreboard didn't reflect it, this is a win for Team USA in experience. And who's to say that if they weren't missing Dempsey and Davies and Gooch, it wouldn't have been a different turnout. So Team USA, you're on the right path. Who can forget, or who really wants to forget, the scandalous head wedding heard around the world at the 2006 World Cup final between Italy and France, where Zidane headbutted Marcos Materazzi, and now Marcos, four years later, is telling the press he's still waiting for his apology. And Zinedine is like, I would rather die than apologize because apologizing would be like dishonoring my family. Marcus, come on, four years, you are just pushing his buttons. And Zinedine, I mean, you're so traumatic. You go from headbutting to wanting to die. Take a chill pill, dude. Relax. And other quirky news. A lot of people have been complaining about vuvuzelas. You know the horns that South Africans are using at the games? People say they're annoying, they should be banned. They shouldn't be banned, it's their thing, let them do it. But one South African entrepreneur has seized an opportunity and he's like, if you can't beat them, join them. And he is finishing the prototypes to get this, a Vuvuzela shaped earplug. Genius. <laughs> so if you don't want to be blowing on a Vuvuzela, just plug them in your ears and keep them as a souvenir. 
Okay, the wax thing, I guess not. But Zidane should invest in a few and just block the mockers out. That's it for this week's World Cup Weekly. I couldn't get to all the friendlies. Brazil beat Ireland. one nothing in my book because an own goal doesn't count. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire lost shamefully to uh, South Korea 2 nothing. But if there are other headline news that you'd like to share, please let me know. And oh, and I just posted links to free streaming videos because I've been seriously annoyed with all of the free streaming videos that really aren't free. And if you know a good one, please share. Rate, comment, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. And I will see you next week. Bye.